Now, a word of warning, there is video of human hearts in this story. Our Dr. Frank McGeorge is here to explain how the technology works, also the major step a local university has made in this pursuit. Traditionally, hearts were only transplanted from donors who had been declared brain dead but still had a beating heart. But there are many more people who die in hospitals when their heart stops beating. For example, when someone has suffered injuries that they can't recover from and their family makes the decision to take them off life support. This is called circulatory death. Even if this person wanted to be a donor, their heart couldn't be used. But now, that's changing. It was a medical milestone at the University of Michigan. In March, surgeons transplanted the health system's first heart from a donor who had suffered a circulatory death. It's called DCD, donation after circulatory death. Being able to use transplants from, from donors uh, that pass from circulatory death could increase that number of donors by 30%. That's a pretty substantial rise in organ donation. Dr. Jonathan Haft and Dr. Ashraf Abu Alela performed the landmark transplant. The recipient was a man in his 30s who was born with a heart defect. He's been suffering uh, with heart failure for many, many years. Uh, he was an excellent candidate for transplant, but his condition was deteriorating, so we wanted the opportunity to be able to get him an organ within a reasonable time frame. The use of hearts that have stopped beating for transplant is being made possible by a device called the Transmedics Organ Care System, or more simply, the heart in a box. Before its creation, all hearts were put on ice to be transported, but about 10% of the DCD hearts on ice wouldn't work, so transplant surgeons didn't want to take the risk of using them. Obviously, if you transplant somebody with a heart that doesn't work, you may be worse off uh, than the recipient was before you, um, before you transplanted that heart. So you really need some type of assurance. The heart in a box provides that assurance. It circulates blood through the heart as it travels, allowing surgeons to essentially test drive the organ to make sure it wasn't injured during the donor's death. It's breathtaking, even for these veteran surgeons. We see those hearts functioning really well right away. I think it's never going to get old to see a heart beating outside the body. We're seeing life going in, into a heart that just died. So this is really a fascinating moment. It means a life opportunity for our patients. The heart in a box also expands where surgeons can go to pick up a heart. The previous time limit was four hours total from donor to recipient. If you're on one side of the country, it becomes very challenging to accept a heart from the other side of the country. The device has nearly doubled the amount of time the heart can safely spend outside the body. Being able to accept donors whose heart has stopped beating can also provide comfort to donor families. Organ donation can be very meaningful for these families that have suffered tragedy. So creating an opportunity where they now can donate uh, these organs to people desperately in need can provide them some, some, some closure. That we are very grateful to the donors and their families. Without organ donation, there is no transplantation. A gift of life that no one takes for granted. A lot of our patients come in end stage heart failure. They are this close and then the fact that they can make it and they go to sleep with a heart that's barely functioning and wake up with a heart that has normal function is something that's really, really gratifying for us. Now, the first recipient wants to remain anonymous for now, but U of M has since performed two more of these heart transplants from donors who suffered a circulatory death. Now, all of the recipients, they are doing well. And while this does have the potential to increase the options for patients, it is still critical to increase the number of people willing to donate their organs. And we have put a link to join the Michigan Organ Donor Registry on the health page with this story. Incredible. It is. Incredible. It's amazing to see. And I know you did the warning about seeing the heart, but it was really interesting to see. See, oh you know, yeah, in to see a basically a right. living beating heart outside of the body, that is amazing. So what's the potential here in terms of the future, what surgeons see? Well, actually, it's absolutely huge. You know, this technology can certainly expand the options for patients right now, but much farther down the road, the doctors can actually imagine today where there could be organ banks, where donated organs could be ready and waiting, beating away for patients who need them. It's wild to think about, I realize, but so was where we are now yeah, back then. Wow, sounds great. I mean, it sounds great in terms of the development. And oh, it's remarkable. Yeah. This is amazing technology. Right, yeah. Thank you, Doc. Thanks, Doc.